football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52. Take this one up to about the 13. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 12 carries, 66 yards, and a touchdown. Well, we know they've clinched a playoff spot, but there's plenty of football left to play. And I'm a proponent right, of continuing to do what you've done throughout the season, especially with teams that are heavy run teams. Because if you throttle back too early, you lose the rhythm of the run game, not just with the team, just the way you're supposed to. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Delay of game, offense. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. He's going to launch this thing way down. He's got a man complete. And they finally get him, but not before he reaches the 33-yard line. A big play for the Vikings on third down. 59 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Been able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. That good for 19 at a first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. You were telling me this yesterday. That's exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's right, game. And it's not necessarily Great, size. Enough. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up. Get it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Tyler Conklin, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. One of the keys to their win. Anderson now, throwing on first down. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on his first drive. Instead, second down. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. And that's twice now already in this first quarter that he's been able to knock a ball away. They're going to need that from him and plenty more if they want to slow down this passing game. Thus far, though, he's been a ball magnet. Let's it fly for Treadwell. It's caught inside the 25. A big play for the Vikings on third down. 57 yards. I know they had good coverage downfield, but you have to wonder, on third and long like that, how does that happen, that they can get that far downfield and complete a pass? You've got to guard the sticks, understand where you are, so it's almost like someone... And he will score! Touchdown, Vikings! Tyler Conklin with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Vikings are able to strike for six. 
That's a heck of a start to this one for him here in the first quarter. Two receiving touchdowns, just getting the game. And they'll go on the ground. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. Definitely worth taking in our deep shot here. He's already found the end zone twice here in the first half. Yeah, go back to that same well. They've had trouble containing him, but able to contain him on that play. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A good pick up there, 22. So again from the 39, this time from the other side of the field. Here's first and 10. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he'll take it down to the 30-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely, pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, it's a run. Anderson loses the football, but a Viking was able to corral this one, and Minnesota will keep possession. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but if the other team doesn't get it, that's a huge difference in the ball game. In this case, they're able to retain possession. And all the way down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. The give to the fullback on the dive. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. It's the fullback. His first touchdown on the year. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. Well, they weren't messing around. First and goal. And they'll run it here. And an alley to run. He's got a convoy, and he might be gone. Touchdown, Vikings. A big play there. His fourth touchdown. Here we go now. Here's Anderson on first down. It's complete to Diggs. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I think it's pretty safe to say that when you're up three touchdowns, the last thing you want to do is hang one up there and put it in jeopardy and possibly get it intercepted. You've got a nice lead. You should be able to protect it. But if you get careless with the football, look out. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
an interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Now throwing on third. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. Mm -hmm. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. <laughs> so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. And Diggs has it. Oh, he's got Stephon Diggs. Touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs. Throwing on first down, Anderson. Oh, a battle for it here, and this will be caught. That goes for a gain of 31. Today's receivers in the NFL, they're the complete package nowadays. We know they can run, we know they can catch, but they have those big frames now. So oftentimes, they just out physical guys downfield and go up and catch the football, and we saw a big gain as a result on that play. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. And he gets it down to the 32. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendencies. Stick. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. here and he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four and he continues to pile up the yardage that puts him over a buck 50 now and this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained hey, 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 hey. Four down. to throw on second down Anderson oh he's got a man wide open complete they give him a gain of 37. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody has that ability, they want them on their team. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Looking to throw. Anderson. Yeah, he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And this Viking offense is running away with it. <laughs> to throw is Anderson on first and 10. Looking middle and that's complete. And he will lose yardage back to the 34 yard line. Call it a loss of six on the play. And it'll make this a second and long. 
Now Anderson operating from the gun. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. He sets. This is caught inside the 15. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, they just treated third and long as simply an opportunity to make an even bigger play. Normally, you're just trying to pick up the first down, and you know where the sticks are. They took this thing way downfield. Confidence in the receivers to go up and make a play, even with defenders around them. They'll give it to him up the middle. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. Good solid gain on first down, about what you'd expect from the big guy carrying the ball. They'll come out in the pistol. Open man is Treadwell, and he's got it for the Minnesota touchdown. Anderson throwing on first down. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him. But find him. Find him. Now Anderson. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they, they will take them out. But Detroit, for the most part, Detroit. they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone and throw into the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Morgan. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Anderson now on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Morris Claiborne. And he'll get this back across the midfield, striping down to the 47-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. We've got a lopsided game here. I, I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance, where they took control of this game, how they've managed to keep control of this game, and then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. And a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Back to throw. Anderson, wide open receiver complete. And he will finally be taken out of bounds. A big play there on the catch and run. 51 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this. 
but run after the catch ability, rack ability is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. The tackle made there by Jared Davis. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Gone, gone. On gone, this gone. day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. down Anderson and the Lions pressure too strong down he goes Devon Kennard coming on the blitz he gets him for a loss of seven I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked that's often a play that you make you feel like you've got momentum on your side unfortunately the old line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going and he'll be brought down at the 48 yard line they get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. That'll put him over 150 yards receiving now. Quite a ball game and a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. It doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. And it'll be a second and long. Well, so much for all the time that you spend in practice because for offensive linemen and running backs to get in sync, that requires a ton of practice time, a ton of watching tape together, a ton of really getting to where you're thinking with one mind on every single play that's called, every single run, because you want to know how your guy's going to block it, they want to know how he's going to run it, what kind of cuts he's going to make, and it's really anticipatory. And when you're really locked in together, you know what he's going to do before he actually does it. On this play, that didn't happen at all. And now out comes Minnesota. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. Looking to throw, Anderson. Anderson loses the football, and the Lions have recovered. And now out comes Minnesota. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation. They've got his man complete. The 20, 10. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And 